Welcome to this video where we will outline some of the significant challenges faced by students studying and preparing for exams and give you some pointers on what they can do about dealing with them. Now the need for students to develop their learning skills has never been more important than it is today. With such a fast moving and rapidly changing world, it is vital for students to develop the skills and understanding to become a better learner. These skills will help them get better grades and harness more of the opportunities offered by our education system. Being a lifelong learner though is no longer an option. It is a necessity to prepare them for dealing with the complexities and constant change their future workplace and professional environment is inevitably going to experience. Failing to develop the ability to gather, process, understand, remember and think about the vast amount of information they are and will continue to be bombarded with for the rest of their lives will put even the brightest student at a significant disadvantage. So let's examine in more detail some of those challenges. The first one looks at timing of the effort made by the majority of students. Now, the typical student experience when it comes to revising for exams is a flurry of frantic last minute cramming activity that probably starts a few days before the exam and may even last right up to the moment just before they enter the exam room. What happens for the majority of students is they learn about the topic when it is first introduced to them in class. Then they forget about it until it comes to preparing for their exams, partly because of having to process and experience so many other topics and partly because of the time that elapses before the need to be tested on it. Then their preparation for their exams is for many like learning about the subject for the very first time again. This cramming approach is extremely stressful and students who follow it do run the risk of leaving it too late to start. There are many examples of bright students needing to retake exams because they got their timing wrong. Well, what's the answer? Well, once students understand how the brain works and how connections can be made, strengthened and sustained for long-term recall, they then have the opportunity to shift their studying behaviour. At the moment, taking the easy route by passively receiving information and doing nothing with it, which means a difficult frantic slog of effort later on. Well, when students make the decision to take the slightly harder route and put in just a small amount of regular effort, which will require a bit of work, that investment now will pay dividends later, making it much easier and far less stressful to prepare for exams. Now, the next challenge faced by students is about how the majority will apply themselves to their revision. Unfortunately, many take the passive easy approach by reading their notes over and over and over and over and over again. So a considerable amount of effort is spent putting it into the mind. And probably the only time they pull it out is when they attempt to recall it under exam conditions. Now the process of putting stuff into your mind, i.e. reading it over and over again, is a very different cognitive process from the one that pulls it out of your mind. Metaphorically, you can think of them as having two different muscles. You have the in muscle and you have the out muscle. They aren't actually muscles, but it's a useful way of thinking about these two processes. So doing what most students do when revising, they have a highly exercised in muscle and a very weak out muscle. There are two problems that arise here. The first is when reading something over and over and over again, there's a tendency to confuse familiarity with knowing. After repeated exposure to information, the student starts to recognise it and therefore is lulled into a false sense of security that they know it. And so when it comes to exam time and presented with a question, they know they've seen the answer to it, but they will find themselves struggling to recall it because they've not practised accessing that information enough to be able to do it when required. And you might hear them say, oh, I know I know it, I just can't recall it. So what's the answer? Well, the key here is to reverse the process. Take something in once and then spend more time practicing its recall over and over and over and over and over again. Now the focus is reversed and they will develop a much stronger out muscle because that is the muscle they will call upon when they retrieve the information from their memory. It does require a little more effort but again the investment will be worth it to cement information into their long-term memory and have the confidence they can recall it at will. Now the last couple of challenges are to do with attitude. It has been said that success in any endeavour is only 20% due to skill, but a massive 80% down to psychology. And this is just as true in being a student. Unfortunately, there is a myth where many people believe their success as a student will be down to their existing talent and ability. So when they come across anything that is difficult or hard to understand, which is inevitable when you are learning new information, 
then their default position will be one of, I can't, because they believe they've hit the limit of what they're capable of, and their tendency will be to stop. However, what numerous studies and research projects that have looked at successful people across all sorts of activities have shown is that effort and time put into developing skills is what separates those that are really good at something from those who are merely mediocre. Successful people have what is called a growth mindset, which means when they hit something difficult, their attitude is about improving their skills and finding ways through the block. So instead of saying, I can't, they say, I can't yet. Now, how do I find a way? Key to their success is repeated practice and a firm belief they can grow and develop the necessary skills to learn and master anything they want to. The most important word a student can ingrain on their heart is until to do what it takes to learn something until they've learned it. Now the next aspect of attitude I want to look at that can be a challenge for students unless rectified is that of students taking ownership for their own learning. Too many students sit back in school or college and expect to be taught what they need to know. Their approach is a passive one that puts the burden of responsibility on the teacher. Now we have some fine teachers in our schools and colleges but they can only do so much to teach the subject. The actual learning has to be done by the students themselves. It is an active process that requires students to capture and consolidate information and then process it in a way that to help them understand and apply that knowledge in the most useful way possible. That might include the necessary effort to commit some of their newfound knowledge to memory for later recall. But unfortunately this is a point missed by many students, probably because very little time by comparison is given to developing the skill of learning. So a huge challenge students have to overcome is that of realising that learning is a skill that they can develop. In this programme we will share some great strategies that can help students develop this important skill. So in summary then, developing the ability to be a lifelong learner is a key skill for students of any age to master, not only for their studies but also to take into the ever-changing workplace environment. Students need to shift their behaviour and focus on regular effort up front to develop and strengthen their attention to the information they are learning so they don't resort to stressful last minute cramming. Spending more time recalling new knowledge out from memory is a far better approach to long term recall than tedious repetition trying to put it in over and over again. Developing a growth mindset and focusing on the word until will give students the right attitude to become a most effective learner. And finally, taking ownership for their own learning and understanding that they must meet the teachers halfway when developing their knowledge in a new area is a key decision to take.